what would you tell yourself if you could go back in time and just give yourself a piece of advice? You knew quite a bit, but as you got into the job, there must have been something you wish uh, you, you, someone had told you. You can go back now in time and tell yourself that. What would that be? Yeah, I, I'll say um, don't don't hesitate to deliver the bad news. Um, in fact, you know, always be prepared. You know, think about the downside and proactively manage the communication uh, to your team. You know, the CEO, the board. Um, you know, when when you first take on a, uh, you have a first shot as a CFO. Uh, it's natural that you want to focus on the positive. You want to prove yourself. Um, and then you might just, you know, take more time to figure out the negatives. So what I learned was that when you're, uh, you take ownership about any, any negative news or mistakes, you be transparent about it. You take ownership about, about fixing it. Um, and, and you communicate it uh, as early as possible. Well, you can gain a lot more credibility that way. Um, so, so yeah, like always be prepared for a downside case. Um, and uh, as a CFO, as you kind of grow through, especially on a fast growing uh, company, it's very important to think through the downside, uh, just as important, uh, it's as important to think through the downside as it is to articulate the uh, upside. Z, uh, we always like to ask our guests to reflect a little bit on the personal side for us. What is there something about you in general that most people don't know? Uh, yeah, so I, outside of work and, you know, uh, two kids, I, I am, uh, every year I spend time, uh, do the alumni interview for, uh, University of Pennsylvania. So, um, I am passionate about that. Uh, it's probably 10 plus years I've been doing it. Uh, I found it super inspiring and also humbling to, to see like, you know, new generation of kids coming in and trying to apply, uh, and, and the ability that they have, uh, compared to when, when I was applying, you know, I think. It's uh, it's pretty amazing. So I see uh, you yeah. sitting in a, a Seattle Starbucks <laughs> with a young uh, potential uh, University of Pennsylvania student. Is that no? I mean, how? What exactly does it inter? Is that what it is? Doing like uh, exactly. industry front front end interviews, and then yeah, uh, exactly. So like as um, you could actually do either in person or uh, remote now. Uh, you know, in the past yeah. it was like exactly at like a Starbucks or they will come to my office or something and then they'll, they'll, um, I will do conversations, but as the, uh, part of the admission process, um, in addition to their normal applications and essays and everything and, and the test scores, we will try to, uh, bring in a more kind of a, a personal side approach to, for the uh, students to always get carried up with a alumni. And then we'll spend time kind of sharing, uh, our experience at Penn and then just let them ask any questions. Uh, so I found that really, it's it's very refreshing every year uh, that you see the candidates and then the question they ask and also their their credential and, and the quality uh, that they come in. So, but yeah, like it, it could be, now I do like half on the phone, half in person, so. It's a great way to give back. And at the same time, it, um, it connects you with your university uh, community as well, one would think. I don't know if the mentors get together annually, but uh, they probably know uh, you know, they have their mentors and they know they can invite them to f special functions or no, is it? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty organic. Um, so yeah. there, there is a community for, um, Seattle, for example, all the uh, alumni interviewers, like we do have contacts and sometimes we do like summer events or like, uh, uh get together. Um, but also in terms of the students, sometimes I'll get, um, you know, uh, email that, oh, they got accepted or they, they also got multiple offers. Um, they want to talk through like, hey, like, should I go here or there? And then I try to be a more uh, objective resource for them as well to kind of like yeah. think through their options. Uh, and those are always fun too. Yeah. yeah, excellent. Well, thank you. Thank you for that. Wondering if you have a book selection for us. Doesn't have to be a business book, uh, just anything that's influenced you along the way or you thought were us fun to read. Yeah, uh, there's one book that I really like. It's about negotiation. Um, it's called Never Split the Difference. Um, so as a finance person, I think every you're always dealing with some kind of negotiation uh, every day, whether it's with clients or your employees or vendors. Um, so the book um, actually took a very thoughtful approach um, and it actually emphasizes the art of listening. So uh, it, it kind of helps you think about the importance of like framing the context and listen to what really matters uh, for them and develop the empathy 
which honestly, I'm, I think I'm terrible at it, right, in terms of like empathy. So I'm working on that, but it is a good call out where um, in, in terms of like negotiation, there's uh, more listening. The person that's listening is more in control than the person that's talking. Um, so hopefully, you know, I can develop more in the situations down the road. See, we're up to our final question. Thank you uh, for offering us some thoughtful answers all along the way here. Uh, we're wondering about your priorities as a CFO over the next 12 months. What come to mind? Yeah, so um, at Customer.io, we, we have some really exciting new products and initiatives coming out in the next uh, 12 to 18 months. So we're definitely focused on um, how do we strategically allocate resources to really you know, fund the growth uh, and the bets that we're making to continue to drive uh, and accelerate our trajectory. That's uh, you know one, and then the other thing that I'm also trying to uh, foster, you know, organizationally is um, having the team to think about timely and relevant uh, insights instead of like waiting for perfect information. Just um, you know, have more timely in information and in inform that for decision making, and just reiter reiterate from there. Uh, we don't need to wait till uh, 100 percent. Uh, perfect when the timing is no longer relevant for us. Uh, and then lastly, it's just like, uh, I, I always think uh, recruiting is a big piece for a CFO. So always out there trying to represent the company, try to bring in talent. And then once they're in, you know, really challenge them and develop them, uh, you know, within the company. So. Z Lee, thank you for joining us on CFO Thought Leader. Thank you, Jack. It's a pleasure.